Welcome to part three of these three pre-recorded optics lectures. This one is about angular magnification and the magnifying glass. Let me introduce you to the concept of angular size. Uh, it's a well-known observation that things appear to get smaller with increasing distance. Um, this was actually discovered by Renaissance painters in Europe in the 1600s and painting became much more realistic as a consequence. But why does this happen? Why does our brain perceive objects as getting smaller with distance? The reason for that is that what the brain actually perceives as the measure of the size of an object is the angle subtended by the object at the eye. So if you imagine lines of sight going from the eye to the extremes of the object, that angle between them is what we perceive as the apparent size or angular size of the object. If we do a little trigonometry, we can see that the angular size represented by the angle theta in this drawing, if the angle theta is small, and we usually will be dealing with small angles, then measured in radians, it's approximately equal to its own tangent, and the tangent from this triangle is seen to be the height of the object divided by the distance to it. So in radians, the angular size is h over d, and if the height h is fixed, of course, but the distance d varies, then the angular size varies accordingly. Okay, so sometimes we find ourselves in the following quandary. Say that you're trying to look at something that is small. You're trying to read a book, for example, and the letters are sharp enough, but they're too small to, to be able to read. So the natural thing to do is to increase the angular size, the apparent size of these letters by bringing the book closer to the eye. But then if you bring it too close to the eye, you can run into this difficulty, that the letters do indeed get bigger in size, but they're also blurred because the eye cannot focus properly on the letters. And the reason for that, as we have seen, is that the image is not formed exactly on the retina of the eye. And so the, eye, uh, the letters are large, but blurred, and we can't see them. So either sharp but small, or large but blurred, we can't read the book. And the transition between these two states happens at the uh, near point of the eye. And the distance, uh, the near point distance, is for a normal healthy eye approximately 25 centimeters. So if you bring the book closer than about 25 centimeters, you can't read it. And that's quite a long distance. So the solution is to use a magnifying glass. If we think of the, uh, of the first situation where we're reading the book with no aid, then the angular size of a letter would be the height of the letter divided by the distance to the book. And if we bring it as close as possible to the eye, that distance would be approximately 25 centimeters. Now, let's suppose that we do use a magnifying glass and the situation becomes like in this lower drawing. We bring the object just inside the secondary focus. And the ray tracing then indicates where the image is going to be formed. Uh, we, as usual, we take a ray that is parallel to the uh, optical axis, and then that emerges on the other side through the primary focal point. And we take another auxiliary ray, the one that goes straight through the middle of the lens, and we know that that uh, is undeflected. And because the object is just inside the secondary focal point, these rays will intersect, or their extensions will intersect, very, very far in front of the lens. So the image will be a virtual image, and in, in terms of absolute size, it will be very large, but also very, very far away. The angular size of the image can be found uh, as this angle theta prime from a little right angle triangle to which theta prime belongs, and again, it's approximately equal to its own tangent in radians, and the tangent is the height of the object, once again h, divided by the adjacent side, which is practically equal to the focal length of the object. So theta prime, the apparent, the, the apparent size of the object, of the letters, with a magnifying glass is h over f, whereas without the magnifying glass, it's at best h over dn. 
So the ratio between the two angular sizes is what is known as the angular magnification of the lens. And of course, theta prime over theta is h over f divided by h over dn, so it's dn over f. The heights cancel out. The angular magnification is independent of the height that you're actually looking at. The factor is always the same. So we can see that if we choose a magnifying glass where the focal length is significantly smaller than the near point distance, then this ratio will be much larger than 1 and we will get a nice magnification. So uh, a typical focal length would be 5 centimeters, which gives you an angular magnification of 5 times. And that's good enough to do because, to read, because the letters are being formed uh, almost at infinity, so very, very far from your near point. So you will see the letters uh, sharply, but at the same time they're larger by a factor 5. And a little bit of jargon to end with. Uh, if you look for magnifying glasses advertised in a catalog, for example, you will find that they are said to be uh, so many power, and it's written as a number times a number times uh, or or x, and that is the same as saying the magnification, the angular magnification, is a factor of five. This brings us to the end of part three.